Welcome, everyone. We're so glad that you made time on a summer sun, sunny summer Sunday afternoon to meet with us. Um, I'm Kara Malenfant. I'm ACRL's interim executive director. I've been on staff for close to 16 years, but before being a staff member, I was an ACRL division committee chair, just like you. So welcome. We're super glad to have you here as leaders of the association and to give you kind of an orientation to um, your work with ACRL in the coming year. I wanted to introduce some of the outcomes of this orientation. We're going to talk a little bit about um, ACRL strategic plan, help you understand uh, how to connect with your committee and your role, talk about how you can communicate with committee members and other leaders here in this room and elsewhere, and to think about what the role of the board is and uh, understand some of our policies around external communication, who can speak and how does that happen. And then we'll also go over your reporting roles. How do you set your work plan for the year? What's the timeline? What's the process? And how do you report about your accomplishments so that the board is in touch with all the great things you're doing? Because you guys are doing a lot. We know we read those reports every year. And, whew. and then we'll give you an update on some of the um, pertinent ALA policies that you just need to be aware of. So following this orientation, we will share the recording and we will share the slides. So don't worry if you don't see um, what you're needing goes by too fast, you'll have access afterwards. We also have set aside an hour for this orientation, but we're really going to limit our remarks to the first 30 minutes or less so that we can have some time for questions. So we'll open it up and have you all have questions, discussion, um, share tips and support for each other. So I wanted to say a few words about the strategic plan. ACRL's strategic plan is called the Plan for Excellence. And it's reviewed annually by ACRL's board of directors and it really guides the work of the association. We have a core commitment to equity, diversity and inclusion. And then we have four strategic goal areas, the value of academic libraries, student learning, research and scholarly environment and new roles in changing landscapes. Each of those has a committee assigned to it and charged by the board to sort of shepherd and carry out that work. And then your other committees, I'll, I'll do also very valuable work for the association and each of you has a charge given by the board. So this is really what kind of guides the work of the association and um, connects to the work that all of your groups are doing. Um, and so this is kind of the way where we frame um, reporting and planning for the year ahead. Over to you, Lois. I'm going to talk a little bit with you today about AC ACRL membership groups. ACRL has many opportunities, and I really do mean many opportunities for engagement, including committees, communities of practice, and discussion groups. This orientation session today is geared toward the division level committees, the task forces, and our editorial boards. At this current time, ACRL has more than 30 standing co committees created, of course, by the board of directors, and each of those committees has specific functions, goals, and interests. We also have 11 editorial boards. In addition to that, we have task forces that vary based upon the needs of the organization. The task forces are established by the ACR Board of Directors for special projects or activities. And usually the life of a task force is limited to approximately a maximum of two years, unless the ACR Board or the Executive uh, Committee decide to extend that time. I want to say this as uh, Kara already uh, re, um, stated, we are just grateful for all of the volunteer work you have done. And those of you, if you're new to this committee, we want to thank you, new to committees. We want to thank you for the work that you're going to do in advance. We couldn't do what we do without volunteers. We actually need your help and we so appreciate it. And if you want to learn more about ACRL's groups, you can always visit the ACRL director, directory of leadership. You can access the Directory of Leaderships without logging in if you just want to see the names, the composition of the uh, particular committee, task force, the editorial board, and the terms. Right now, if you chose to go to the Directory of Leaderships, you're going to see a little overlap in the terms. And that's because there's an extended grace period that goes through July 31st. And that's to give leaders uh, an opportunity to finalize their uh, whatever work they need to do before the conclusion of their terms. And then in August, on August 1st, you'll see the terms, they're going to revert back to their original status. 
However, you'll need to log in with your membership username and password to actually see contact information for those particular individuals that are on the group's task force and editorial boards. Now let's talk a little bit about committee leaders. Everybody is a leader. <laughs> you, you may not necessarily quote unquote carry the title of a leader, but everybody is the leader in their own right. ACR committee leaders cohort includes the chairs, the vice chairs and editors of all ACRL division level committees, task forces and editorial boards. These groups are actually approved by the ACR board of directors as I stated previously and current committee leaders include chairs, vice chairs, and they are automatically subscribed to the ALA Connect Committee Leaders Committee. So each year when your term ends, you know, you'll go off the committee in ALA Connect, your term begins, you're automatically added. So you don't have to worry about that. In ALA Connect, this is the place where updates on work plans, meetings, and other important deadlines of interest to all leaders are shared here. So I really admonish you to go to ALA Connect if you haven't done so already, familiarize yourself with it. And as I say, the division levels have their own specific uh, Connect link and included in that is all the chairs, the vice chairs of the division committee levels, the editorial board editors are on there and task force leaders as well. As well. As is the word connect is intentional. You can send emails through connect and you can have discussions within your specific groups. Now in re reference to leadership council, Leadership Council typically convenes two times a year and includes all ACR leaders and topics they usually vary from year to year. But this is your opportunity to hear the latest news from ALA and ACRL. And it's also an opportunity for you to engage with other ACR leaders and members. Now, over the past several Leadership Council sessions, we've had them virtually, primarily due to the pandemic. But going forward, if all goes well, uh, they will resume to be face-to-face -face sessions. But as I said, that's if all goes well. We don't know how this is gonna go. We're currently still in a pandemic and I know no one anticipated being in a pandemic this long. But details for the Leadership Council, they're gonna be sent to all the committee leaders via the ALA Connect space uh, once we get closer to those specific dates. Now, let me just touch a little bit about committees. As I said, we have a, a, over 30 committees in ACRL. And most division level committees, they include a chair, a vice chair, members, a board liaison, and a staff liaison. And to view your committee's rosters, as I stated previously, you can simply go to the directory of leadership where you can see the composition information. You can see information regarding a specific member, such as their email address, uh, their organization or university affiliation, but you have to be logged in with your ALA membership to see that more robust, robust information. And the terms of all committees, as I stated earlier, they usually begin on July 1st and they end June 30th. And if you go to the rosters, as I stated previously, you're going to see some overlap because the rosters have been extended to July, 1st, July 31st, I'm sorry, to give members an opportunity to finalize any other uh, work that they have need to finish prior to the ending of their term. And then on August 1st, the rosters will revert back to their original term dates. Chairs and vice chair appointments are for one year and member appointments are typically for two years. There are a few exceptions, such as the budget and finance committee. Their terms, their membership terms usually are longer for four years, but for primarily for the most part, most terms of members are two years and chairs and vice chairs are for one year. I want to emphasize this, please make sure to include your board and staff liaisons in meeting invites and communications. And you can find out who your board and staff liaisons are by simply looking at your rosters. You know, these liaisons are very important members of your committee and you want to make sure that you reach out to them because they can help you accomplish your committee goals throughout the course of the year. 
And on that note, I am going to turn this over to my colleague, Allison Payne. Thanks, Alois. Um, let me go ahead and switch over the screen real quick. All right, so um, I'd like to introduce myself as Allison Payne. Uh, my title is ACRL Program Manager for Strategic Initiatives, and my pronouns are she, her. Um, I just want to also reiterate, um, Elois and Karis, thank you. Um, we really appreciate all the work of our committee members and our committee leaders. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about ALA Connect. So ALA Connect is the place to go to have discussions. Um, you can do threaded discussions. Um, you can post your events, so your media announcements. Um, per ALA policy, those should be posted um, 10 days prior to the meeting date. Um, there's also a library where you can include your agendas, minutes, and documents. And if you're an incoming chair, you may want to peruse um, your ALA Connect library to just kind of view the minutes, the previous year's minutes, just to kind of catch up. So that's a great place um, to check out. Um, so with ALA Connect, those are tied directly to the roster. So you're automatically added to your group's ALA Connect space when your term begins, and you're automatically um, roll off of the Connect group when your term ends. So um, very easy to access. So I will go ahead. I want to share my screen um, and show you where to find your Connect group. Um, so there is the roster page. Um, I have the EDI committee pulled up here as an example. Um, so all the roster pages are pretty much um, composed of the same major uh, subheadings. Um, and towards the bottom of the screen, you'll find the resources. And in this section, you'll find your connect group. So very easy um, place to find all everything you need to know. Um, and then I will show what your connect group actually looks like. So each connect group is pretty much the same. You have your discussion, your library, and your events where you can post meetings. All right, so I'll talk a little bit more about meetings. Um, you can meet in person um, face, to pay, face to face at annual conference. Um, Elois will be sending those details later in the fall to the committee leaders listserv, so, or committee leaders connect group. So please keep uh, an eye out for that. Um, I do wanna reiterate that um, in-person meeting is not required for a um, committee service. So you can be a committee leader, but still, or a committee member and still just um, attend virtual meetings. Um, so the virtual meetings um, that I do wanna talk a little bit about here, um, the link is actually to our virtual meetings page and we will be sharing the slides following this presentation as well as the recording. Um, so virtual meetings are definitely an option um, for committees to meet. Um, we ask that you do please first consider your own platform, um, such as uh, a free Zoom account or your institution's account, Zoom account, or perhaps free conference call, um, if, especially if it's a shorter meeting or um, it's a smaller meeting. Um, if you don't have access to Zoom or one of those services, um, you can use ACRL's virtual meeting uh, Zoom room, um, which you can find the information by going to this link. Um, to sign up to use the space. Okay. So I'll talk a little bit here about work plans and reports. Um, so usually if you've served on a committee before, usually staff sends out the template for the work plan and all that good information in May. Um, we did not send that out in May this year because the board actually held a priority, a couple of priority setting discussions um, to identify the short-term goals um, for the coming uh, one to two years. Um, so a board working group in June or in July actually updated the template to include the priority, the outcomes of the priority settings. So this year's template includes um, a section just on priority settings. So um, staff will be sending that template and all the information about work plans and reports um, in by, this, by, by the end of this week. Um, and I will say all the information will be included in this email, um, but the outgoing chair typically completes the report for the prior year and the incoming chair typically re uh, completes the work plan. Um, are there any questions? Can you? Allison, can you, can you show how to, how to show the contact information for our committee members? 
Sure, that's a great question. Let me go ahead and exit out of this. So um, I can use the EDI committee as an example again. So what you'll need to do is log in by clicking that button on the top right and log in with your ALA credentials. Um, and here the information hasn't shown up. So all you have to do is refresh your screen and there it appears. Okay. Um, refresh the screen was the tricky part. Thank you. Yeah, there, that's the trick to it. Um, any other questions? Becky, I see you have your hand raised. Yes. Um, does any, does everybody on our committee have access to the contact information or is it only the committee leaders like the chair, vice chair? Yeah, that's a great question. So yes, all the committee members um, do have access to the contact info. Perfect. Thank and in you. fact, any anyone who is a member who logs in would be able to see that. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. That's the end of my slide. So I will hand it over to the next presenter. And Allison, I actually wasn't prepared to share my screen. I wonder if you wouldn't mind sharing and advancing a couple slides for me because then you'll be back on again anyway. <laughs> sure, Thanks. no problem. So I'm up to talk a little bit about um, how your committee can work with the ACRL board. And so, you know, as we've as we've reiterated a couple of times, it's the ACRL board of directors that has created your committees and has given them a charge and said, here's the work we would like you to do on behalf of the association. So the and you have each of you has a liaison to the board. The board really welcomes requests of whatever kind you may have throughout the year. So if there's a new initiative, um, if you're thinking about starting something that's really new or different and you want a little feedback, um, you can ask to come and just have a conversation with the board. And we have a form that we ask you to fill out just so it's clear who's making the request, what's the context or background on the request, and what's what are the specific questions you want some help with. Um, you know, it's a great way to, to really help advance the work of the association as a whole, and the board really does look to all of you as leaders to bring opportunities forward. So one of those things that might happen is you might be asked to, to comment on something. Some other outside group or organization might come to you and say, what do you think about this, that, or the other? Would you endorse this? Would you make a statement about that? Um, so if you are asked or if you see an opportunity to make a comment, to send a letter of support, or to take a stand on an issue that you think is really important, please bring it to the board because really it's the board that can speak on behalf of ACRL. And there are many times when we've relied on all of your good thinking and all of your good talents to surface something and say, hey, this thing is happening and we think we ought to speak out and the board's like, yes, let's do that. So um, we can give you a lot, we can give the issue a lot more prominence by having it be through ACRL as well and use all of our communication channels. But really you guys are the subject experts who have the content and the deep connections with some of these communities and might notice something coming up um, before the board does. So if, you know, if you, if someone reaches out to you and you think it's a thing ACRL ought to take a position on, by all means, work with your staff liaison, work with your board liaison, and we can get that moving quickly. We don't have to wait for a board meeting. We can quickly pull together um, a little group to say yay or nay and turn things around oftentimes, you know, within a day. Um, if you were to ever get, say, a call from a reporter, you're welcome to answer questions and comment as an individual, but we'd ask that you not use your ACRL title or it might be construed as speaking out on behalf of the National Association. Um, and if you think it would be better for the ACRL president to take a stand or speak out, um, again, be in touch and we'll work on that together. We might ask you for some help with talking points and whatnot, but um, that's, that's also an option. So that's it on the board and your committee and on speaking for ACRL. The next um, policy piece I wanted to touch on was about surveys and research and publications. So we know it's super easy nowadays to create surveys, right? And we all use them often to good effect. But we do ask that if you're going to create a survey that goes beyond your own group. So if you want to check in, get the pulse on something or other to help influence a program you might develop or a toolkit you're making or whatever it is you're working on, and it's going to go beyond your own committee, um, just check in first. Check in first with your staff liaison, and we are ready and able to quickly help you review it in order to make sure that we're, um, we're not asking too many surveys of the same people at the same time, reduce fatigue, um, avoid duplication. We might know of another group that like is already thinking along those same lines and we say, ah, you guys could join together and 
both use those results. And then also because we do see so many surveys, we have some um, develop some expertise around how to ensure that they're of high quality. Uh, so we would just ask you touch touch base with your survey with your staff liaison for a quick review. And if you are doing a survey um, of members for uh, a work related project work related to ACRL work, you don't have to go through an IRB review at your own institution. Um, some people choose to because they want to create a survey that can also help them with um, research publication. Uh, and so that might be your choice, but it's not an expectation that we have of you. Again, once you've worked with the staff liaison to, to just double check everything, we can also really help you make sure you reach a broad audience with your survey and get out to a lot of different people. The other policy piece I wanted to remind you all is that um, ACRL and ALA have the right of first refusal because you're doing work for a committee for ACRL within the auspices of the association. We want to be the ones who can get that word out. ACRL is a publisher. We provide online learning. We know that you all have super creative ideas, and we would like to be the first to consider how we can get your units work out or how we can offer a webcast or um, in other ways connect your information and your great um, content knowledge with the broader community. Uh, the person who can help you the most with that would be content strategist Erin Nevius, but you can also work with your staff liaison. And then one other piece uh, sort of policy wise to know or structurally wise to know is about the relationship between ALA and ACRL. Um, the way that it works, ALA is the one single legal entity. There is one organization, it is ALA. ACRL is one of the divisions. There are other divisions too, core, PLA, AASL, and so on and so forth. But we are a little unique among American associations in that each of our divisions has its own elected president, its own board of directors, um, you know, and our own uh, responsibility actually for generating enough revenue to support our division programs and our division staff. So in the eyes of the IRS, however, ALA is one organization and it's a 501c3. And I bring this up because it means that we're designated as a charitable an educational nonprofit organization for the public benefit, we're not designated as a professional association. What does that mean? Why is it important? Well, it puts a few limits. It means um, there's really a limited amount of lobbying that ALA is able to engage in, and lobbying is um, specific uh, requests to elected leaders for particular pieces of legislation. It also means that we can't have political speech, which is defined as supporting or opposing particular candidates standing for office. So that's a thing that's important to know, and it applies to all of our communication channels. So it's gonna to apply to official things that staff send out, but it's also gonna to apply to the ACRL members community and connect. Um, you know, we can't take stands on candidates. Um, we also can't organize boycotts. That's another thing. We can't engage in restraint of trade and we shouldn't be making defamatory remarks. That would sort of be an expectation I would hope all organizations have these days. But if you have questions about any of that, if something's in doubt, just ask your staff liaison to help you clarify or be in touch with me. So while we can't take positions on specific candidates, ALA and ACRL and all of you can take um, positions on issues. So we can support IMLS funding. We can support um, the Rebuild America's Libraries Act. We can support uh, rules that uh, help uh, enhance net neutrality. Um, all those kinds of issues. And Eric is here. He's the chair of our government relations committee. I hope folks may have noticed we just put out our 2021 legislative agenda. And this is kind of a statement of values. This is what ACRL values. This is what our members value. This is the kind of legislation we would like to see happen and that we're prepared to speak out if an opportunity comes up on these kinds of topics. So you should um, expect to hear from ALA with requests for you as individuals. Sometimes you and your districts are going to have relationships that you know, staff at the national level here, we wouldn't have. And sometimes we'll need you to reach out to your member of Congress to sort of make that point and bring alive uh, a story, an example, an anecdote that shows why a particular piece of legislation matters, like how it would really change lives for you, for your students, for your college or university. Uh, one other thing I wanted to point out is this financial relationship between ALA and ACRL. I said earlier, we're a division of ALA and we have responsibility for generating all of our revenue. So what does that mean? You know, we're a bit different than a library in a college or a library in a university where you would craft a budget and then you would go to your dean or your provost or whomever and say, here's what we would like. And the university would, would give you the funding from 
fundraising they've done, endowments, um, tuition, wherever the money comes from. It's a little different here in this nonprofit context. ACRL needs to um, create all of the revenue that we need to support all of our activities. So we don't receive any financial support from ALA. In fact, um, it's our dues, it's our registration for things like conferences or e-learning, it's the sale of publications like books and whatnot, it's advertising revenue, it's sponsorships, all of that covers all of the costs for ACRL, including staff. We also pay overhead to ALA through indirect costs, it's 26.5% on most revenue, not, not dues, but conference registration, those kinds of things. And that's to support central IT, uh, legal, HR, finance, the rental of our office space, and also some of the core offices that are supporting all of the profession, like um, Intellectual Freedom Office or um, Office of Diversity Literacy and Outreach Services. So um, just wanted to mention that. And in, in this particular climate, it's important because right now ALA has a working group that's looking at this policy between ALA and its member divisions. And sort of how does that work? How does the money flow? What are the services offered? It was created decades ago and it's really time to take a deep look. I'm one of the people who's on that group um, and it, it might there might be some changes, things might get renegotiated. And so I would just um, encourage you to keep your ears open and hear about opportunities to really, if that's your thing, if you love thinking about how organizations work and the structures that underlie them and the policies, this is a group that's moving and things are changing. So that would be a good one to keep your eye on. So those are kind of the end of my remarks about the policy pieces. I think Allison has a couple more tips for you and then we'll open it up for questions. Thanks, Kara. Um, so I just want to point out a couple of additional resources. So we have the ACRL Guide to Policies and Procedures. Um, throughout this presentation, we've referenced um, several policies. And if you're curious about the history or if you want to dig into the uh, the full policy and procedure, or if there's something that you're curious and you want to check the website first, um, we've included the link here. Um, I also want to point out that ACRL offers LibGuides for free to its uh, membership groups um, for committee work for um, relate, work related to ACRL. And it's not supposed to replace your work within ALA Connect. Um, things like bibliographies or toolkits are um, great things to put in LibGuides. Um, and if you'd like to set up a LibGuide or you need an account, um, you can reach out to me um, or Elois. Um, and where to contact ACRL staff. So I've also included a link um, to the contact ACRL staff with all of our names, emails, um, and contact info. All right, so I'd like to conclude. Thank you very much for attending this orientation. Um, and now we will open up the floor for questions. So I think at this point, if folks have questions, you can either use the reactions down below to raise your hand, or you can just put yourself on video and like a wave. And as I see a few people, I can kind of line you up. And then depending on what your question is, we'll see who's best suited to answer. We're lucky to have a couple other colleagues with us here too. Mary Jane Petrowski is our associate director, does a lot of work with membership and some of our um, trends editorial board and others. And um, David Conley, who's another staff liaison. So we're all happy to field whatever questions you have. So go ahead, get those hands up and let's see who's, who's what's burning, what's on your mind these days. Well, I have a, I have a, just a dumb roster question, uh, if that's acceptable at this point. Yes, um, very much so. And it's probably just a function of my lack of technical skill. So I put that out there right up front, but uh, I know that I was stupid enough not to realize the previous year, last year buttons uh, earlier in the summer. I notice now when I go to next year, it looks like all I'm seeing are the members that have uh, that have terms of service from uh, uh, from 2021 through 2023. And I'm now losing the people who still have a year of service through June of 2022. Once we get to August 1st, does that automatically revert and those people get pulled forward? I see Allison is nodding her head because she knows the answers to all this stuff. <laughs> Um, I was just going to say, um, I think that the roster should correct itself um, on August 1, but if not, reach out to staff. Okay, thank you. That was the end of my dumb question. Thank you. 
Not a dumb question. What people are, what people might not have caught onto that Eric's mentioning is down at the bottom of the roster. It says previous year and next year. So you can always go back. You can go back a couple of years ago. If you're like, oh, who used to be the chair? I wanted to ask them a question. I forgot. You can go back, back, back a few years to find out, or you can also go forward, but it seems like there's a little glitch with that forward um, just because of this overlap question. So yeah, let us know if it doesn't correct in August and we'll look into it. And yes, I'm, we're seeing comments supporting this beginner's mindset. Love it. Yes. I, I tell you people, I, like I said, I was a committee chair myself and then I, I've been on staff. I am still learning. I'm like, we do what? How does that work? Oh, or just even about the work that all of the committees are doing because there's so much fabulous work happening out there. I'm like, wow, that's impressive. So what else? Who else has got a question? I see Marilyn, you've got your hand up. Why don't you go ahead and unmute yourself if you can and fire away. Um, I know that we've been, we're wait, been waiting on revised forms for say the work plan. Uh, is there any sort of heads up you could give us on how it's different? Sure, I can start and then Allison can help. The, the year end report is more or less the same. There's an additional question about whether you have undertaken some sort of an EDI related activity or project that you would like to be included in the ACRL um, LibGuide. We thought, oh, let's ask that and get that good information from you easily and, and add it to it. And then the other piece that Allison was mentioning is that um, the board of directors has had a conversation in few conversations, iterative conversations in June about how much our current environment is changing and how um, we really want to have a narrower set of, of priorities for the coming years. So those priority areas are in um, EDI related work, communication and engagement with, you know, your members of your groups and um, in uh, membership growth. So there's for this year's work plan, there's a couple of questions that say, are you doing things in these areas? What, what are you thinking about those three? Anything on your plan? So it'll still ask you to describe each of the activities you're doing, but above each of the activities, there's these three questions like, are you doing anything in these three that we should know that would help us be able to better calibrate or understand if these are priorities that are um, priorities for your group as well? Allison, is that a pretty fair assessment? Did I forget anything? Um, yeah, I think that summarizes it really well. It's basically just one additional page for the priority setting questions. Okay, thank you. So hopefully not a heavy lift. Hopefully, you know, you can just scratch your head for a couple minutes and then say, oh, yeah, this relates or that relates. Or <laughs> no, we don't have anything that relates to this one or that one, but maybe next year. Okay. So I can ask another dumb question since nobody else has dumb questions. Is there any update, uh, because I haven't been following it closely about the search for a new ACRL executive director? I think the most we can share is that there are interviews ongoing, um, but I think that's probably, that's probably all we can really say right now. Um, we shall see. So can we cast votes now or? There is, I will say that the search committee and Mary Jane can attest because she's on it, I'm not, but um, the search committee does have a large number of uh, ACR leaders, right? So it's got current president, a couple, few few past presidents, actually three past presidents now, uh, chair of our budget and finance committee. So there's good, strong representation from members of the association who really have a stake in choosing who our next ED will be. Who else has been wondering what is going on with ACRL and ALA these days? Or how you can be effective in your roles. Maybe it wouldn't hurt to ask if you have any comment on our ACRL budget since we've seen so much about ALA's budget. Sure. So, I can start with kind of a high level um, overview and then I will invite Allison to, to add and or correct me because she's a really our budget maven and Mary Jane as well. So for folks who, um, because, because of that dis distinction I made earlier where ACRL is really responsible for generating all of its own revenue and covering all of its own programs, 
Um, we really look carefully at our budget and we look carefully at what's called the net asset balance. So over the course of years, um, divisions are allowed to accrue um, and carry over any excess. And so we had done that in past years. We had done that several years back and had made a very intentional choice by the ACL board of directors to just start to spend it down and to start to reinvest in mission. And so this led to things like the creation of the um, open and equitable scholarship uh, white paper that RESEC came out with or scholarly communication research grants, uh, value of academic libraries, travel scholarships, uh, project outcome for academic libraries, that whole tool that all came from a very conscious choice by the ACRL board to reinvest some of our excess net asset balance into programs and services that would really meet the needs of the community. So we had signaled um, well over a year ago before the pandemic, before we knew um, about some of the ALA budgetary challenges, we had already signaled to our board and already started to have conversations to our board saying, we did a great job spending down. We need to, to eh, you know, start to get a little more balanced. So we've already been in that mindset for, for more than a year and a half of saying, we've got to get a uh, keep a close look and make sure that the revenue we're generating um, is enough to cover the expenses we predict. So we've had a series of iterative conversations with our board um, over the course of this year and again um, in June about are there some costs we can um, hold back on, some expenses we can hold back on, and do we have um, more information, more current information about our rates of membership you know, which are tied to ALA membership or about things like um, the phenomenal rebound in job list placing of classified job ads, which that has, has rebound much quicker uh, in, after the pandemic than, in, for example, in 2008, it was a very, 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 very long and slow rebuild before we saw job ads getting posted this time, they're starting to get posted. So based on all of those factors, based on what we know about new products and services we're developing, both the revenue we expect to generate, um, the expenses we accept, expect to incur. We're making final adjustments to our ACRL's budget right now, and we'll be talking with our board and budget and finance committee to approve the final budget in late August, early September. Um, and the way it works with ACRL is one year, the year that's just starting, we, we spend down, we have a negative uh, balance at the end of the year. And then the next year, because of our conference, we have an up. So we have the seesaw budget up, down, up, down, up, down. And what we really need to do is make sure that the two years equal out. So that's what we're kind of doing is looking at like, okay, over five years, where do we think things are going? How do we think we can make sure that we're evening it out and we're not risking down, 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 you know? So that's sort of a rough um, overview, but I don't know if there was a more particular question you had in mind, Eric, or if no, okay, or Allison, if there's anything else you'd wanna add for context to help our member leaders better understand how our budget works and how we relate to ALA. Um, I think that was a pretty good overview of a lot that's been happening, Kara. Um, I think I'd also add, um, if there is something that's a major change for a committee's budget, like for example, the research and scholarly environment, something that they, um, like the research grants, like if the border budget and finance committee wanted to change that budget, um, of course we would go back to the committee leaders, check in their input um, on any major changes to the budget um, for a committee. And we also have Kristen, who is a Budget and Finance Committee member, so please yes. feel free to chime in if you'd like. That's a good overview. <laughs> Thank you for asking. Um, but yeah, that's, that's about my understanding. <laughs> and I guess the other thing I will say is, you know, when Allison said we'll go back to committees or groups and check before we would make major changes, uh, please do understand that these changes aren't really solely driven by the pandemic and they're not really solely driven by um, any challenges ALA is having, right? It's, it's an artifact of um, us doing a really good job of having raised a whole lot of money and then spent it all down and we need to just be a little more careful. So it's not a signal of, of um, the organization failing. It's not a sign of anything other than sometimes pilot projects can't continue forever, right? And so we've had lots of conversations, um, Kristen can attest to this and, and the board too, where it's like, we're not at the point of choosing like, clearly this is a good project and that is a bad project. No, sometimes it really is choosing like, these are all good projects, but we can't keep doing all the good things all the time. So that's, um, it, there have been some hard conversations. Yeah, go ahead, Kristen. So this this makes me think of the changes in the work plan that, that you were mentioning earlier about naming priorities. And I think it's really great that we're having that to really start reflecting on what we want to, it, uh, focus more on instead of um, scattering in different directions. 
I'm, I'm happy. Um, I think that priority setting trickles into what we're trying to do with the budget, right? Yeah, for sure, for sure. And it definitely ties into what we've been hearing from ALA and from the executive director, Tracy Hall's idea about a pivot strategy, where we really do want to focus on growing membership. We really do want to focus on, you know, really engaging people and keeping them engaged. Um, so that's work that all of us can engage in, right? That's work all of us can do in all of our committees. We can think about ways to help people stick ways to help them want to want to persist, um, just like you all think about how to keep the freshmen coming back as sophomores and how to keep the sophomores coming back as juniors. We think about that, too, like we don't want people to dip in for a year and then go Meh, and dip out. We really want them to be um, committed and engaged, just like you guys are, because um, there's thousands of you doing the good work of this association. This is your association. And there's a handful of staff helping that sausage get made, but we really rely on volunteer labor, volunteer effort and energy, and it's it's your association. So that's my pitch for Ra Ra Sierra. So given that it's your association and given that we do really greatly value leadership from all of you, I wonder if some people who've been leaders in the past or for a while have um, any thoughts or tips um, for each other, like how, what are some things that have worked well for you all in getting your committee members engaged and getting them plugged in? Um, recognizing that you all have full-time jobs and full-time lives, and this is a side thing. So how do you help people feel like they're doing meaningful work and how do you help them learn how to um, cut through some of the red tape or, or whatever the analogy might be? Any tips? I think when you can to write to everyone, um, I mean, in Connect, but I mean, even out, like outside of Connect as well, um, and putting their names, just making it more personal and giving a sense of um, if you're in a section or um, there might be ways for two of the two committees to collaborate or um, ways to connect the past um, chairs with the current chairs and just ways to help um, make them make folks feel like they're they belong and that they have a job that we can all work together. So I guess making it more personal. I was going to chime in and say that uh, with our committees so dispersed geographically and meaning also that we're across different time zones. At least one of the things we're gonna try this year is to establish a, a schedule of meetings early now in the academic year uh, that people can work other activities around. And I know that's the hardest part of organizing this kind of committee work is organizing meetings, uh, just because people are all over the place. And certainly during COVID when we didn't have any real in-person gatherings, just kind of, I mean, you can't just say, hey, who's available tomorrow at three o'clock? And so we tried to bake into our work plan at the end of last year, kind of some established dates at which we're gonna try and meet. And it'll be my goal to, to set those meetings and probably set them uh, now with days and times right through the end of the, the cycle. Becky, I see your hand, go ahead. Sure, well, just piggybacking on, on uh, what Eric just said, um, the value of academic libraries committee, we do very much the same thing. So people can plan their schedules um, quite far in advance to become engaged. But one thing that we found very, very useful to engage all members of the VAL committee is to um, have a very active subcommittee structure. And so our subcommittees, you know, all uh, have very active initiatives that they've taken on. And through the past year or two, we've really enjoyed working with the subcommittees to um, facilitate their success in hosting webinars like like rather than the like Amanda folk who's the outgoing chair and I'm the incoming chair rather than us work on all the logistics the subcommittees work out the logistics with ACRL staff and um, board members and um, I 
you know, it's a learning process and Mary Jane's our, our staff liaison. She's been ever so patient with us, but I do think it's empowering and makes people feel a little more engaged, like, wow, this is my contribution to something really big and meaningful. And you're getting some, some affirmation in the chat. Active subcommittees can also lead someone into one of being a vice chair in the future. So yeah, for sure. They've got a good point. <laughs> other thoughts, other ways you would want to give support or advice to incoming leaders or other things you've been wondering that you would want to ask incoming leaders like how do you handle this or how do you handle that i see there's a question in the chat about the annual conference call for proposals um i pulled up the information for last year so i can kind of share what the timeline might be but i haven't seen anything unless other staff on the call all right so it looks like last year um the deadline was september 30th so and the submission site opened in mid-July. Um, as staff, we can look into that to see maybe the deadline's been pushed a little bit later because of the pandemic, or um, but we'll check into that and send out a note. Hey, Lois is awesome at keeping us all on track with all of those dates. And I know the big date right now is related to Libler Next proposals, right? That's correct. Uh, I don't see anything about the programs for AC 2020, 2022 as of yet. But in regards to LibEx, as you may know already that it is replacing midwinter and it is quite different from midwinter. LibEx, there will not be any quote unquote business meetings and all of the meetings you actually have to do, you submit a proposal for a presentation and the deadline for that is August 15th and ALA, all of this will be under the umbrella of ALA. So if you submit a proposal, it gets accepted. Uh, that proposal, uh, all of those particular programs are gonna actually be in one centralized location as opposed to midwinter. You're no longer gonna have meetings in different hotels. All of those uh, presentations will be done at the convention center. And I believe we put something in the syllabus, went out in the syllabus uh, last week or week before last. Uh, providing information in regards to that. And then I'll send an email next week, just reminding everyone, if you haven't seen anything, if you wanna submit your proposal, you still have time to do so. But again, it is almost totally, totally different from midwinter. There are no business meetings. They're trying to get more members involved in professional development and a lot of other um, progressive activities as opposed to just coming together to have a business meeting because you can actually do that via Zoom or some other virtual platform. Let me add you one thing about what Becky said. Um, so when we hosted, I'm actually ACL Bell Committee and I'm a vice chair. And uh, when we looking for the mechanisms, like uh, how can we disseminate our findings and Mary Jane supported us like uh, using the online discussion forum. And the uh, Eloise was very helpful to setting up like a uh, presenting like uh, assisting us how to uh, use the Zoom and uh, how it works. and then, Everybody's like a uh, staff liaison's support is extremely helpful for us to move forward rather than stopping at a certain situation and then couldn't handle that. So I think I really wanted to uh, express my appreciation to um, Mary Jane and Eloise about that. Thank you so much. That's great feedback. You know, that's, I think we really see ourselves as partners. Like you guys have the content knowledge, you have the expertise, you know, these topics in and out and we know how to get it done. So, you know, let's work together. Let's get your good ideas out in the world. Cause we don't want you to have to spend so much time on that piece when really it's the, it's knowing about Val or it's knowing about government relations or it's knowing about whatever your topic is. You know, that's what we want you guys to, your time is limited. You have jobs. So let's, let's, channel your passion and energy. So thanks for that feedback. That's super. That's exactly what we hope to hear. And we hope everyone else will have a similar good experience.
Becky, I see your hand is up, but I think it might just be from last time. It's not again. Okay. So, so do others have thoughts, comments, or questions? I, we're happy to hang around. We're also happy to give you back 10 minutes. I mean, it's, this is your meeting. This is your time. So you let us know. I'm seeing some sort of general nods like, yeah, we could end 10 minutes early. That wouldn't be such a bad thing. Yes, I love that 10 minutes back too. All right, well, please know we did give you a lot of information. Um, we will follow up with links in the, in the committee connect community. You'll be getting that, um, that template form to do your annual report and your work plan. Not too many changes, a little bit of changes. Um, and you just, there is no question you can't ask. I mean, don't struggle, don't spin your wheels, just reach out and ask. We're happy, happy to help you get things done. So thank you very much, everybody, for making time and have a great year. And thank you. Bye.